That's uh, a pretty hard act to follow, I would say. In fact, I think I should have her give the rest of uh, <laughs> I'd like to thank Mary Woolley for a magnificent job in Science Advocacy Research America. And I'd like to thank the Jeffrey Bean Foundation uh, for this wonderful award, Builder of Science. And let me tell you about the next edifice I'm trying to build. In taking a systems approach to medicine, it's obvious to me that healthcare is really about two things. One is wellness, and the second is demystifying disease. With regard to wellness, what we really need are metrics for being able to assess how well we are. Now the definitions are vague and psychological. For disease, I think there are two really important things that we don't get to do in contemporary healthcare these days. One is to look at the dynamics of disease, to see how it changes. Rather, we tend to study it uh, more toward the uh, end stages. And of course, the second thing that's really important for disease is to study it in that earliest point of transition from wellness to disease to understand what's going on so it can be thwarted there rather than letting it move down the way. So what I'm proposing, what we're proposing at the Institute of Systems Biology is a study, longitudinal in nature, Framingham-like, of 100,000 well individuals that we'll study over the next 20 years or so where we'll look at six different types of data, many of them gathered sequentially all the way down that time period. So what will this do? This will take the 100,000 individuals and divide them into two categories, those that maintain wellness or increase their health, those that move transition into disease. And of course, the real hope is that we can study those earliest events of disease transition, get diagnostics and the therapeutics that move people immediately back into the wellness trajectory, thus saving the healthcare system an enormous amount of money. What this will do is create a virtual cloud of billions of data points around each individual that we can integrate and model and ultimately come up with actionable possibilities for each individual uniquely to improve their health. And I'll give you an example of a friend of mine at Microsoft who at 35 started to acquire uh, severe osteoporosis. Had a genetic analysis done, discovered defective calcium transporter, started taking 20 times the normal amount of calcium, and in a year and a half his bone structure was normal and now uh, 12 years later, is an absolutely normal individual. A genetic deficiency that was managed by uh, a vitamin. So the real question that we can ask then is what is this longitudinal study going to do? I would say three things. Number one, we'll have the data cloud that will let us examine each of you as an individual to optimize your wellness and to minimize your disease. Number two, we can over time assess the data that comes from those people that remain well or increase in health and look for metrics of wellness. One metric we're really looking for is a metric that will allow us to identify your, your physiologic as opposed to your chronologic age. So if your physiologic age is 50 and your chronologic age is 70, you're in great shape if the inverse uh, you're not in very good shape. And of course, the third transformation is going to be that we'll have an enormous amount of data on the transitions from wellness to disease so that we can begin to assess how to transform people back into that earlier stage much sooner. How are we going to proceed with this? We're going to start uh, in decades of 10. This month, we're starting with our hundred, first hundred patients on this study. Then we'll move 
in a year after we've learned the lessons to 1,000 and then to 10,000 and finally to 100,000. We're in a unique opportunity with this type of study, I think, to really transform healthcare and to bring to it the fundamental trio or mantra of how we want to change it. I really believe this is going to improve the quality of health care. I think it's going to decrease costs in health care. And I think it's going to promote an innovation which will create an entirely new industry, one of wellness which I predict in a 10 to 15 year uh, time period will have a market cap exceeding that of the classic health care business. So, how do we move forward with this challenging initiative? Again, we'd like to reach out to all of you that have ideas and suggestions about how to move forward. But it is an idea whose time has come, and it is the wedge that will transform our healthcare system today. Thank you.